Greetings, everyone. This is Payman Lonazi, your host of the Leeds Live Podcast today for episode, I believe, 252. Uh, I have one of my dear friends, Mr. Roger Burnley. We connected over two and a half years ago, one of the first episodes I had on my podcast, and then I've been following him. He's been doing fantastically well. And it was about last week, two weeks ago, actually, I was doing a coaching call with my new student in my academy. And he mentioned that he's being trained, he's getting amazing value, amazing training through you. That was the first person that mentioned your name, another person. And then next thing I know, I was just browsing through my YouTube feed and I see your video being interviewed by a big channel. You get what, uh, 95,000 views in, in, in 10 seconds. Now you get 100,000 views. And I said, well, the universe is sending me a message. Get in touch with Roger. I said, yes, let's get on the call. <laughs> we had a call last week, very awesome call. And you've been up to some amazing things. So first of all, Roger, Welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you so much. I, I can't tell you how how great it is to be here. Because yes, two years ago, whenever we did the last one, I probably wouldn't have told you everything. As I um, that interview that you're talking about was on Next Level Soul with yes. um, Alex Ferrari. Yes, and um, and it took me a while to go to there. It took me a while to get on that show because I not because of anything that he was doing, but it's like I waited. I was hesitant. Because I didn't, I, I said, people aren't going to understand what I'm talking about. Um, and I'll just tell you, because I probably didn't talk about all of this. Several years ago, I knew the world was changing. I knew something was happening. Something was becoming different. And I'm see, receiving all this cosmic information, these downloads. Because um, as you know, I started doing automatic writing and channeling and all of that many years ago. But I wasn't, but the information I began receiving in 2020 was quite different. It was saying, no, you're in a new place now. But then they're telling me this, and the year later, I hear, and this was the craziest story ever, and I put this in the interview, I uh, go out for a walk. This is 2021, and I hear my guide say to me, my, you know, my Wilhelm say, we gave you everything you needed to know in 2012. I remember I go, that. This, that makes no sense. And I kept doubting that and they kept it. And then I come into my um, home and I go to my computer and I find a, a a folder that I hadn't looked at payment. I hadn't looked at this folder. I, it's like, it's been there the entire time. And it said Wilhelm on it, but see all of my other messages said any advice for today. I thought, well, that's where they all are. Nope. There was this other folder that I hadn't looked at that had Wilhelm on it. And I opened it up and the messages were 2012. So did, I go, you, did you recall creating that folder? The folder just appeared no. on the computer. I, I, you know, I, I don't know when it happened. It's been there for a while. And so I'm thinking that um, there was a time where I had an assistant. Now, he may have created it and done that. I don't remember because then we, because we were changing things. We changed the website. And so, so I couldn't figure that out. They said, nothing is accidental. You just figure things out later. This is what I, this is the information that came. Yeah. And so I still doubted it all, but I said, no, your world is moving through a restructuring and you and and you have something that can help everyone understand this because it's going to be a little chaotic. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be all of these things because you have to have that. You can't change anything you can't see. You can't change anything you've been ignoring. And the world hasn't been in a great place for a long time. And so this is why this is happening. Now, later on, I started finding more evidence of this through studies of ancient history. And a lot of people were talking about it. There's so many people on, on the spiritual path who were talking about all of this, but I wasn't one of them at first, you know? And, and I'm looking at this and I'm going, this is nuts that this was happening. And then I said, okay, I put these people in a program in December of 2021 and I saw them transforming. And it was from all the work that I had downloaded from all these years, but it was specifically the work that came through during 2012, because that was a time that our world was moving through another change. We go through these energetic changes in our civilizations, and we can look at our galaxies and see that occurring because it's all energy. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. So that's that's what it was. But I was hiding out. That's why I said that. Payment. So prior to that, prior to realizing all of that, were you spiritual? Were you religious? You were completely not into any of that. I hid it, and I'm being quite. I'm quite quite in um. 1986, um, 
I grew, okay, let me go back to the beginning. When I grew up, my family was, uh, we were Christian scientists. Well, my my father had no religion at all. He didn't care. His family was Baptist. My mother um, was a Christian scientist. Her mother was a devout Christian scientist. So that was already very different because it was something that no, most people didn't understand. We didn't, we we knew that everything was about mind. And so we didn't do medicines. We didn't do, um, go to doctors and typically and all of that. It was, and I always felt a little weird, ostracized, because it was strange being the odd one out. But after that, I left all of that. I didn't care anymore. When I went into my younger years, I'm partying. Let me go out and have a good time. I don't want to do any of sure, that stuff. Yeah. Some time to be, right? Showtime yeah. era, you know? <laughs> let me get some money. Let me have a fast car. Let me have all these good things. That's how I lived my life. And then I jumped around from all these different careers and, and this, that, and the other. But then in 1986, I had a job where um, someone talked to me. Uh, my boss at that time was friends with uh, Marianne Williamson. She's um, some people, a lot of people here in the U.S. know her because she's running for president right now. <laughs> but anyway, which is, but anyway, she was doing, at that time, she was doing lectures on a course in miracles. And oh. so I started going to, these lectures and Course in Miracles, and I thought this is interesting, and I seem to understand it. I did the book, the, the the workbook, which is 365 days. Yeah, I did all that and stuff, but still, I left it. I said, okay, that that was it. I did that. Then in 1988, I was making another change in my life, which was a little scary, and I was freaked out. And I said, let me just sit down and start to meditate. I read an article about automatic writing that's how this came about and when i um and i said oh this guy sat down and received information just from meditating that doesn't make sense and then i started doing it and then eventually information started coming through and it frightened me at first and and i said well, what's weird what's happening who's speaking to me and then i heard oh this is another part of you it's your higher self but if that makes you uncomfortable you can call us anything you like and then i and then i blurted out wilhelm don't know where that came from. I, I, I found out years, years later why that name came through. I didn't know then, but it felt safe because now I could say this Wilhelm person is writing this stuff and I don't have to. And it's But what it was doing was it was changing my life. I was getting through things. I was understanding things. I created a business that, that started to grow. All of these things were occurring, but still it was so weird to me that I couldn't tell people because they're going to think I'm out of my mind. They think I think I'm crazy. And I did that for years. I went through so many physical healings of things that were unbelievable, but I was continually receiving this information. I hid it. I tried to hit, hide it for 20 years. And then um, someone found one of the messages and then I was exposed. <laughs> you know, they started saying, this really helped me. Where did it come from? How did they, was not, they when they find out about what you're really doing? Well, I still hesitated. They they okay. What happened then when the person found the debt message? It was on sitting on my desk. I'd written it, and they said it really helped me. Would you send them to me? I said, yeah, I do it every day. And they said, would you send? I said, sure. So I started a small email list. That's all I did, and I just put it out because I'm still hiding out. And then other people said, well, no, you need to make a website. So then, okay, reluctantly, I made a website called anyadvicefortoday.com. And so P and I would post the messages there. Still didn't want to do more. But then things started to change. And I knew, because I'm, I'm very introverted also. I don't like being out there. I don't like people. And I don't want to be judged. You know, the fear of that was just horrible. But in 2019, I said, I got to go further because I could feel what was happening. And so that's when I wrote a book on fear. Was it a specific moment in 2019 that flipped the switch for you? You said it was a gra it, it was a it, it was a gradual it was a building up because in 2016, actually, is when I started writing things differently because I felt an energy of change in the world coming. So that's when it started. But then it became so intense. By 2019, I knew, well, maybe I started in 2018. I get, didn't get done until 2019 because I knew that people were going to have a lot of fear. And I had moved through so much of it throughout my life. And, and many of the messages that I had received talked about that very thing. And so I said, okay, I'll write a book on fear. So 
I it's called Overcoming Fear: A Guide to Freedom, and um and 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 I and I hesitated, but I had a good friend who said she would edit. That's the only way it got done because I would I was still hiding out, and uh, but it finally got out there. Then in the next year, 2020, is when I started receiving the messages about restructuring. And it started to make sense. We were going to move through some fear. We we're going to have all these things come up. So you mentioned you do, um, you've been doing automatic writing as well as mm-hmm. channeling. So in your channeling sessions and your um, automatic writing s- sessions, do you get messages of what is to come? And if yes, did you did they tell you anything about the upcoming pandemic and how that's going to completely reshape our reality and our world? Yes. Um, I didn't, um, this came through, didn't come through in the writings as much as it came through in the live channeling session. Do you see? Because that was something that I wasn't going to do. <laughs> that was something that I was hiding out from. Um, I was, I, I, I would, information would come that I knew I needed to save. And, and it started back in, you know, 2015 or 16 or something. And so I would just pick up my phone and channel something into the phone. I didn't share it with anyone. It was just, I was just getting the information. But in um, as things started changing in 2021, 20, uh, I started saying, receiving the information, nope, you've got to talk. You've got to start. We have too much information to bring to your world and you, we, you've you got to start. So I said, okay. So I started doing live channeling sessions, which were at first really uncomfortable. I was terrified <laughs> because I didn't want to do it. And then I said, oh, no, this is where I'm supposed to be. Then it started to become comfortable. Then I started to say, no, I've got to do this. And during those sessions, more information would come through and, and about the pandemic. They said, we gave you the pandemic so you would come together, not fall apart. <laughs> Thank you very much. Be- so kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically figure out something. and You're creating something new. We don't create anything new in our lives or in the world unless we have something that we want to move through. And a pandemic was a great opportunity to do that, <laughs> which we've all felt and experienced. However, but it was about bringing us into a new world, a better world. That's what was this entire transition, this restructuring. They said, you're ushering in a new world. But it can only come through each of you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. So what are you getting nowadays currently and your and your channeling and your messages about what is to come in the next say um, twelve months for us? We have a little turbulence just in the next in the next several months. We're gonna have a little more turbulence because um and this is going to be more around our economic uh structures everywhere. I'm hearing about the uh, collapse of the uh current uh, financial system, the banks. It it's going to change. It's going to be different. We, it, it might look like a collapse because we have to break down the old structures. However, it has to be adjusted. And the way that it's going to be adjusted is in our energetic use, usage of abundance. How are we using the abundance in our lives? Are we allowing it? Are we allowing ourselves to have it? Are we? And then when we have it in abundance in any way, and then when we do have it, how are we helping the re- everyone else how are we helping the rest of the world so because we have this these disparities they said you've had these wealth and income disparities in your world for eons and this is why it's changing and so it's yeah and it, it might look like a collapse in certain because it has to change it has to become different this is why they said a restructuring um and you're just going to find a more equitable way for all of you to prosper. Because why do we have people starving to death in certain countries and having nothing? That doesn't make sense. We have plenty of, of wealth and uh, uh, resources in the world. It's just not distributed in a way that would serve the greater good for all. And we're attempting to do that now, move into this place where we are doing things in our lives uh, that are serving us, causing us to love us who we are and put a different energy into the world. And then we do something, we we then change the world in that manner as well, because now we're abundant and we, we're not going to ignore things that we've been ignoring for, for a long time. I keep hearing that. And also I've been following a lot of other channelers, one of them being, I don't know if you heard of him, um, Brian, uh, Brian Johnson, Canadian guy. He does 
He does he's been doing channeling for over since 2008, 2009. Very mm. popular one, and also a couple of uh, tarot readers, one of them being Janine, tarot by Janine, she's Canadian, and but she was so good that she was demonetized and her channel canceled. But one thing that I've also been following is that you know, they talk about this ascension to the 5D world and, and, the, and the upcoming solar flare. Mm -hmm. so what is Willem and your guides? And what are, what message are you getting about that? And what are your thoughts? Well, we're affected by, yes, the energy is there. We're not, a solar flare, people, some people will be affected, you know, see that, but no, most people won't understand that. But the but the difficult that we've, we've had is that people, when we use these terms, people will think, well, is it someplace that we're going? Is that, you know, the fifth dimension? Is that a, it's got, no, it's a consciousness. It's an up-leveling of consciousness, which our society, our civilizations always move through. And we're, we're doing a big shift right now. Because, see, we can't sustain a planet where we still think that certain people don't matter. Or yeah. certain people aren't, don't have this importance. But see, we've done that forever. When we go back, this is why studying of ancient history can show people we've moved through these times where at one time we 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 uh, subjugated entire races of people. We subjugated women, We're, you know, forever. We've done all of those things. And the only way that we sustain a planet and one that we all want to live in is when we let go of those old outdated ways of thinking and that is the dimension of that's the fifth dimension it's a new level awareness of um with that within us and one that we create in our world we're saying that there will be a division of timelines one timeline negative for those that are focused on self-serving they will still keep in this current reality of Lack, war, fear, famine, disease, and those that are more focused on, on service to others will go to a different timeline where there will be none of that. It's going to be peace, abundance, perfect health, uh, and just beautiful. So is that myth or is that something? What are your thoughts on that? No, it, no it's happening. And we, and we, and, and, and my guys would say, it, it's going to happen. We're going to move into this new dimension, but the difference is how difficult are we going to make it? Yeah. How, how horrible are we going to make this change? And we make it difficult when we resist. When we resist change that's happening within us, then things are going to be challenging. And you can see now that there has been resistance globally. This is why they started saying, because um, this was the part that was came in that was a little frightening, because they said, you might have a war. I go, no, we're not going to have a war in this time. That's not going to happen. This is what I'm thinking. But they said, and you might bring in a leader like a Hitler. I go, what? This is the stuff that I was writing and was so uncomfortable to put, but I knew that I had to talk about it because we had to understand what was happening. And we only put these leaders in, in throughout history when we want to make a change in our societies. So do you... Are they telling you who's that? Is that Xi Jinping, the the the, the dictator from China? Is it someone? It's, else? Well, it's 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 a it's an energy. Uh -huh. It's a, it's it's an energy, and 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 we we all have aspects of these lower vibrational energies. They've always existed, do you know? And then throughout time, over civilizations, we we get rid of some of those. It's just why the world evolved. This is why we have new technology. Why we have, the world looks quite different than what it did a thousand years ago, you know. But we're moving through a period now where we have to make this other energetic shift. And so there be several people. Yes, all the ones they and the other things too. You're making a choice whether you want to have a world speaking globally because we can see it everywhere now and you can see people taking their positions we will have a world that's either ruled by autocracies and dictatorships or more democracies and freedom that's that that's what we're doing and that comes through the individual through humankind through the individual through all of us so what action steps can you suggest and recommend to each and every single one of us to ensure that we're going towards the right timeline, toward the right and a world of peace, abundance, health, and and freedom. What can we each of us do every single day at a micro level? Because 
nobody can change the world by themselves, but if each and every single one of us, we do our own little part, then we can create ripple effects around this that's going to change right. and see of the world. So what tips can you provide me and every single one of us? You just, you said it so brilliantly though. That's exactly it. It's the ripple effect. When we understand that our lives are so important, are so valuable, but we also have junk in them. We also have things that we didn't understand and their limitations and restricted. That, and so when we start moving through those, then we feel lighter. Our lives become different. Now we're putting a different energy into the world. And when we understand, we, which we know now through all the um, you know quantum sciences, that the way that we create anything is energetically. So think about that. If we energetically are creating our lives to be happy and fun and abundant and uplift, yeah, that's going to do the same for our world but it has to come through each of us. But we also have individually old stuff from our ancestors, from our place where we grew up, whatever it is. And when we can eradicate that from our lives, then we start to put a different energy into the world. And then we're because this is the part my guide said that you don't understand. You don't get how important you being happy and prosperous is to not only your life, but to your world, because then you do something different. You see, you won't fight people. You won't have wars. You won't need to take things from stuff from others because you know you have enough. <laughs> you know, this is one thing that I've been doing for the past few years. One of the most powerful tips I've been given was stop watching the news. So if I haven't watched the news in five years. So I saw people yeah. tell me, hey, do you know what's going on in Canada? I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. And yeah. I, you know, I refuse to participate in this reality of fear. When people say pandemic, I say, what pandemic? It doesn't exist in my reality. <laughs> I told you my life as it was in there because it isn't there. You know, for example, oh, you're gonna, you can't do this, can't do this. Well, I can because I'm in charge of my, my, you know, I worked hard. I'm in charge of my destiny. I work online. I don't mm -hmm. depend on anyone. So I have my own business. So I don't have to watch my words like if I, as if I was in, in a corporate world. We have to really walk on eggshells. You can't say anything. Mm -hmm. so there's... There's a new class that is emerging, and that is called the professional uh, professional victims, professional offenders. They're always looking for a way to get offended. But whatever, right. if you look them the wrong way, tell them the wrong way, or God forbid, call them with the wrong pronoun or whatever. Come on. Right. I refuse to participate in that nonsense. For me, that doesn't exist. So we have, the, at least for me, tell me how how much I'm on the right. You said, no, you, you, no, this is perfect. This, this came through in one of the channeling sessions, too. They, this is perfect. And you are your perfect, this great example, because you are protecting your energy. When you decide, made the decision that you weren't going to watch anything out there in the news and all of that, that's perfect. Because that keeps your energy into, a, you know, this other place. Then they said, but well, there's certain people who will watch things. And then depending on how you interpret that, like if you're seeing something horrible going on in the world, they said, if you can see it and then turn it around and say, oh, this means I'm seeing this horrible thing, which means I'm supposed to shine more, which means I'm supposed to love more. I'm supposed to, that's how I can shift things if I do that. So, so whatever is right for the individual you when you follow your heart, which is what you did by just making that choice, which was perfect because then you could be available to bring in people like me and other information that you're doing. So that's great. And I've always, since I was a kid, I always loved helping people. You know, I've been the biggest cheerleader to push people right. to go to their dreams. And since the start of the pandemic, I had my own spiritual awakening and and I've got connected to the world of spirituality and to I had my own awakening. And my podcast, when I started, it was because I wanted to build a platform to launch a new brand in e-commerce. E-commerce was my background. But then at very fast transition to being a platform where I'm talking all day long with mm -hmm. incredibly inspiring, heart-centered, spiritual entrepreneurs and people and like you and others. And that has allowed me to really completely change my perspective and become a different mm -hmm. person and as a result of that i'm just i just love i'm gonna it. ask you a question yeah what's your birth month and day just the month and day october uh, so i was born just before midnight so what i was told my it came on the 17th but the rest on the 18th so let's take and have two birthdays october 17 and 18 we'll do the 17th <laughs> that's when you right. that's when your official but my passport and it says 17 with yes, 17 of october October 17th. Okay, vision. Okay, let's see what this says. 
Decide. Oh, wow. <laughs> you did this. Decide to continually hold the vision of who you desire to be. As you move through your physical life experience, most times you require some sort of motivation to create or manifest what you desire. The vision of that in all its aspects will help you find that motivation. It is important that you not limit that vision or think that you need to know how precisely how it will occur. The only thing that is fully important for you is your imagination. Mm -hmm. Your imagination is much more powerful than your usual uh, than you usually acknowledge. As you decide to embark on this particular journey and process, you will also find the happiness and joy in your life increasing. Wow. Now, that was your message. And it was given on your birthday in 2012. What does it say for October 18th? Just I'm curious. Oh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, because maybe you have a split personality. Let's see. Yeah. But that is so fascinating because that's exactly what you did. When you changed in 2020 to, I mean, when you started to doing this, knowing you had to make a change, um, that that was what this message was. That is so crazy. Okay, October 18th. Is that what we're saying? Is that what you asked? October 18th? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Same thing. Okay. Your focus, yeah. <laughs> you 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 have all of this together. This is so interesting. Your focused attention is a very powerful gift you have been given, but many times you are unaware of how you are using it. Focused attention means where you consciously your your consciousness or present moment awareness decides to direct your energy. Energy is what creates or manifests anything physical. The difficulty you have in observing where you are now and focusing your attention there, and uh, the difficulty that you have is observing where you are now and focusing your attention there instead of using that focused attention in a manner that creates what you truly desire to experience, manifest, or, or create. As you study this concept more closely and accept the premise behind it, your logical thinking will make sense of it, and you will begin to use your focused attention in a different manner. That was for the 18. Wow. Both of those are you, because you did that. When you started moving, see, again, they told me that if I met someone and I had a message, if I received a message in 2012 on their birthday, that it would resonate for them, that it would make sense and it would show what they're up to in this experience, in this life. And that's exactly what you've done. You made this change to start doing something. You left everything else behind. You were focused on what you were creating and it started to move. Yeah, that was perfect. I started my podcast exactly on my birthday in mid-October 2020. That's it. Yeah, that's that's 2020 is when all the messages started coming through about this to alert me to what, what was going on and what we would be moving through. Because the purpose was they said, we don't want you to have fear and doubt. We want you to keep moving forward. We want you to keep embracing who you are. But again, I was not I was holding back. I wasn't going to just it didn't make sense. And the reason that you saw that interview on Next Level Soul is because I knew I had to get out to more people. Yes, it was meant to be. You know, when I started my podcast, my goal was and still is to inspire entrepreneurs to do good. Now it evolved to to give a platform for good people with beautiful hearts and powerful messages to win. So it's evolved in a way to <clears throat> focus, but it's still the same thing. I want to give a platform to people to awaken, to to inspire, to empower others to take control of their lives, follow their hearts, so that together we can each if we can inspire just one person to do good and that person pays it yes. for someone else, together we can create small ripple effects around us to change the frequency, direction, and energy of this planet towards a better direction. This is my ultimate. And, and so you are following exactly what you were meant to do, which is so brilliant. And you said um, ripple effect. Yes. <clears throat> I had that sense of being. So tell me more about, I know that you've been, working on some exciting stuff. So tell us more about what's been cooking in Roger's kitchen lately. 
what I did was um, I finally decided that, okay, when I had to accept what was going on because I knew that I had something that was going to not only help an individual, but help our planet. That was a challenging concept for me to, to move into, but now I see it happening. Just before we came on this podcast, I just uh, had a group call with my, my people in the program and it's just the most glorious thing ever. People from all over the world and, and professional folks who are awakening to different parts of them. This is the thing that I really wanted. And so what you did, this is why I want to talk about this, because you didn't know you were doing this necessarily, however, but deciding to get these entrepreneurs on to get them to win and get them to create a platform, get their message out, earning income. That's the most important thing because see the people that you're attracting are those who are, have have this heart centered and they have the, something they want to do good in the world. You are multiplying that by bringing them on and finding them. And then this is the shift of the income inequality will happen because of the work that you're doing with these people because they will earn more money. They will do more good in the world. And that's the whole, that's more of that ripple effect that you didn't. So here's the message. I got to read this to you because you said those words. Now this came through in 2015. There is such a thing that you can think of as the ripple effect. It is powerful, continually present, and and you always have it at your disposal. It is also something that you continually underestimate what it might accomplish. The ripple effect is employed by you by how you decide to act and speak and to whoever is in front of you. In that instant, you are invoking a powerful energy that is also indiscriminate and can go in any direction. You see it used in your world all the time, but also in ways that do not produce the results you desire. And that can cause conflict and violence. All you ever need to do to employ the ripple effect for good is to decide to be consciously aware of the intent of your words before you speak them or of your actions before you take them. That's the ripple effect. Wow. And in favor, that's exactly what you're doing. Wow, thank you. That's really warms my heart to hear it from someone like you. Thank you. Well, I do whatever I can in my own little modest way to inspire to make the world a better place. Yes, for my you're doing it. Yeah, this is all the confirmation. Through my books, <laughs> through whatever way I can do. And this is my, I dare to say, my gift to the world. In a modest one, humble yes. one. Yes, but that's, that's the other thing that they, my guys keep telling me to tell people, no, it's not modest. What you're doing is big. What you're doing, because you because you couldn't have said the words like ripple effect, you couldn't have known that, you know, it's because it's, and that you were moved in, and, ex, and exactly the time that you did it, in 2020, that was when the, this energy was changing what was more important, and you just heard the call. That's what happened. <laughs> I'll share something else with you. Sometimes after finishing my podcast, it's like me and you, I rewatched them before releasing them, and I swear to you, I can't tell you how many times I found myself saying, wait, did they really say that? Where is that coming from? Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. the energy was being, sorry, not the energy, the message was being changed. Yes. Almost if I'm in a zone, because I see things that I would not say in a normal conversation. Yes. Yes. That's what they want us to understand. We all have that ability. And that's why I had to go out. And when I do my channeling, they keep saying Roger's in a different dimension. You all have this ability. You access it at times. And that's what you're seeing. You're accessing this universal consciousness that's just coming out of you at times that you don't know. And then you see it later. Go, Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is perfect. That's beautiful. So what can I do now to amplify my work, to amplify what I'm doing, to, to amplify my connection with source, with the universe, to really access that infinite wisdom and then... No, you're doing... No, you're just, just the last line. The last line that we just read. You're doing it. It's just a real... That, let me read it again, just this last, this last part. Okay. All you ever need do to employ the ripple effect for good is to decide to be consciously aware of the intent of your words before you speak them or your actions before you take them that's what you're doing you're doing it with the with this with this podcast 
and you're being you're you're selecting the right people, you know, that you're coming on that are delivering a kind of message that you know will help do, will do good in the world. No, that's it. You're you're doing it, and just, but it's the energy of your acceptance of what you're doing which is going to be really powerful. That's all, because the energy directs everything, and it's always within us, and we're using it. Um, either you know, unconsciously or consciously, we get to decide. Wow, beautiful. I mean, this is what I love hearing. This is what I love doing, and I love talking to incredible, inspiring people like you. So I just gotta just keep doing it. I just, I mean, it's beyond the in your book and all of those things. No, this is exactly what you're doing. Just, just, <laughs> just keep loving it. Just keep putting that energy into it. No, you're making a huge contribution. You know, the first year when I started my podcast, I had no plan, no desire to monetize. Actually, I made zero dollars, zero penny in the first year. Yet, I still kept on doing it. My, I was living with family. My sister was telling me, wait, are you getting paid to be on the phone from 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night? I said, no. So are you stupid? I said, no, I just enjoy doing it. It was a calling. I didn't do it for the money. And I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I mm -hmm. love talking to people. The podcast for me has been a tremendous vehicle, not only for my own awakening, but also mm -hmm. for me. It's been an ongoing part of my ongoing education, learning about things I thought I knew, but most importantly, learning about things I had no idea even existed. For example, yesterday I had a wonderful podcast with a lady with a phenomenal gift. She's an energy healer for pets. Let me repeat that. Mm -hmm. Energy healer for a pet. I was blown away. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So uh, for me, it's all about inspiring. No, okay. I'm not, okay, I can't do this whole thing. I, I'm not going to take all this time, but I, there was a message that came through Yeah. and it's going to speak to you. And it said the money confused you. Yes. And what it said, it was this whole long thing that came through talking about a day that I spent where I wasn't earning any money. All I was doing was giving people help talking to them giving them stuff and my friend looked at me just like your sister and your family said did you get any money for that did you get any what what is that did you what why are you doing that i'm like no because i'm doing it because i felt like i was i meant to and it felt good and it, this is what i was doing i was following that calling now that was years ago and yes. that has all led to where I am now and yes the abundance is there too because I didn't go for just the money I was going for what my heart was telling me and that's what you're doing and that's where all of you and your abundance is just coming in and big and <laughs> there's so much of it that's on the way you know what I noticed Roger is when I focus my shift my mind for me the mm -hmm. two most beautiful rewards of business number one is the impact and the transformation I help and the lives of people I work with. And number two, the beautiful friendships and relationships I build in the process. The money yeah. is icing on the cake. For me, before, the previous version of me was all about money, money, money. Money was the cake. There is yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I know that I focus, one. I focus exclusively on the impact, on the transformation, and helping people, inspiring people, empowering people. I swear to you, my brother, money has been appearing in ways that sometimes I have to pinch myself. That's a, this is exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's what's happening. When we start owning that authentic, because see, you own that authentic part of you, that guidance, that innate guidance that was just showing up. Oh, this, this is perfect. <laughs> Sir, this is great. Love that. Love that. Listen, brother, uh, I know you've been working on some amazing things. And I just mentioned briefly that you're doing a challenge. Yes. Tell us about that. The challenge, yeah, we're it's going on right now. It's a five day challenge. We just start, just taking people through this process, and we're calling it a roadmap, um, a roadmap to success. Because my belief is that everyone has it. Everyone has it within them. They just have to figure out how to get there. Because it's something that we were born with, every single person. But we have different paths and that we have to follow. Different difficulties, challenge, whatever. But still, within that journey, is this brilliance that we can live. And that we could have this success, experience that success physically in whatever way serves us, however it feels great to us, whatever that means. And so that's what's coming about now. And so it's been a lot of fun. But everybody, I'm good. We'll we'll do another one, you know, as well. But everything people can find all of this on my website. What is so if someone wants to reach out to connect with you, what's the best way to do so? To rogerburnley.com. We're 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 gonna have everything there. So 
all the links, portals to everything will be on, on, on rogerburnleet.com. How often do you run these challenges? We don't, I don't know. This is the first one that we did. And it, it all came out so, so together, you know, because that video that I, uh, that interview came out uh, a, last Sunday, actually. And so I, we've, I've been inundated with so much, and, but we had planned the challenge before that. So all of these things are coming together. We're, tr we're just managing it. But uh, so this was the first one, but we will do more. So I just love people to come and they can get on my mailing list and they can find out all that information. Let me know the next time your challenge is. I'll definitely join it myself. Does Great. I will. And uh, so the channeling, do you have this capacity to do it at will or do you have to be at a specific time and moment and put yourself in the right environment to the channeling? No, it come, it's, it, it's, it, it always comes through. It's always there. Um, I just have, what I do is I just shift into uh, a, a little different awareness and it, it, you know, it just takes me a second, and then it always happens when I'm asked a question. If I need to get information, I can always do it in in that way as well. I mean, if you're okay with that, we can schedule another time, another call for another time, and you can just do a quick channeling session for us. Well, I mean, what would you? I mean, I can do something real quick now before we, we leave it. Uh, I'm now, but uh, next time maybe I'm going to be traveling next week, but maybe in two weeks' time when I'm settled in my new back, new perfect in Malaysia. Yes. We can do a quick 20, 30 minute call with a, with a channel. That would be great. And you can that would be good. You can tell me what, uh, what I need to do to prepare. Do I need to send you any, any, uh, any, uh, any questions? That's what I want to know or an intention. Yes. Yes. The questions would be helpful. If I get that in advance, then I will bring in all the information of what is appropriate for that because you'll be connected to something as the reason of why you're asking the question. Yeah. So that would be, that's a great one. Yeah. If you send the question the beforehand. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll follow them to the letter. Great. Yes, yes, yes. I that... Listen, I salute you. You're a true leader with a heart. Thank you so much. You're shining your light, you're blessing the world, your presence, your impact, your vision, your mission, your high energy, your smile, your voice, your presence. Stay safe, stay awesome. God bless you, my brother. I'm going to definitely talk to you soon. I can't wait. Take care. Perfect. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay, see you Bye -bye. soon. Cheers. Ciao.